Hi, welcome back to Diagonal Move. My name's Neil, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Meltwater, which is a 2018 game from Hornspiel, designed by Aaron Lee Escobedo. It's a game in which players take the side of the opposing powers of the Cold War, and in this alternate history, those powers have launched their missiles at each other, and the human race is struggling to survive in a post-apocalyptic Antarctica. The aim of the game is to eliminate the other players' forces, and even as you do so, the radiation creeps in and um, renders life ever more difficult on Antarctica. It is uh, an excellent game, more of a strategy game than a war game, although there are certain certainly war game elements. Um, had a particularly bleak theme, possibly not going to be for everybody, but it's a game that I thoroughly enjoy and I'm looking forward to showing you how to play it in a little bit more detail. So let's take a quick look at the map to start with and go from there. Looking now at the map for Meltwater, it's a hex hex overlay onto a map of Antarctica. We do have uh, a few features to go through, the first and probably most important being the hexes. There are four different types of hexes, three of which are visible at the moment, and one that becomes a feature as the game progresses. Uh, the majority of the map at the start of the game is, is what's called clean hexes. So these are all these white hexes here. And they're called clean hexes because they're not currently affected by radiation. And there are no modifiers applied to them at this point. The basic premise is that there is a certain amount of life that can be sustained in Antarctica without any other modifying influence from radiation or various other things. And so each of those white hexes can support two units and each of these units represented by the counters. Modifiers are applied based on certain things and on the map itself the key modifiers are the blue hexes and then the hexes with these black symbols. And blue hexes are what's called the ice shelf and they can support two plus one. So they can support three units when not modified by any other factors. These these um, hexes along the coastline have a minus one modifier and that's because they have begun to become affected by radiation and they are known as dirty hexes and dirty hexes can support just one unit at a time. The type of, of hex that appears as the game progresses is called dead hex and these are represented by these dots. Dead hexes can sustain no life, so no units can survive in a dead hex between turns. And also it, they will cause a knock-on effect in the, the areas around them, so that any adjacent hex becomes a dirty hex if it is not dirty already. And over time, of course, the dirty hexes and the dead hexes will, will over, overcome the clean hexes and the ice shelf hexes. Modifiers stack, but you can only have one type of modifier affecting any one, any one hex. So, for example, the ice shelf here would normally sustain three. Because it's on the coastline, however, it does have a minus one modifier. So that minus one modifier means that this particular square uh, hex can only sustain two units. So even though it is a ice shelf, which would normally have a three life support number. It only has a two life support number. The fact that it could be next to multiple other dead hexes or dirty hexes is not applicable. It's, it's one modifier of one type, but the different types do stack. And what you'll find throughout the game is you'll need to keep an eye on which modifiers are applicable and, and, and balance them out as the time goes by. The other features on the map are these sort of these research stations and this is an indicator of where the map the units are set up at the start of the game and they don't really affect gameplay hugely other than during setup the only other thing to mention about the map is you do have these lines of longitude and latitude much like you'd find on a globe or, or, or a map in an atlas they're just for flavor they don't influence uh, the game in any way Let's take a closer look at the counters in Meltwater and also some of the other components like the cards. 
The counters are broken down into three different types and three different sides. You have civilians, and the blue is the US. There are soldiers, the red for the USSR, and then there are neutral civilians. The US and the USSR both have the same number of soldiers and the same number of civilians. Soldiers in both cases are limited to four units uh, of military soldiers. US and USSR are enemy to each other at all times, and you cannot share hexes uh, with, with units of the opposing type. Civilians, or, or neutral civilians, or the refugees as they're labelled as they arrive on the map, are neither friendly nor enemy to um, the other side, meaning that you can stack your units with a, a neutral civilian un um, chit so long as you are within the stacking limits when the what's called the starvation phase happens. This sir hex here, this with the sir with the arrows on, is a stockpile, and that provides a plus one life bonus to the hex it is on. So, for example, a clean hex will be able to support three because of the stockpile. These hexes around it will also benefit from that bonus if you have a friendly unit in that stockpile hex, meaning that those dead hexes on the, so those, those um, dirty hexes on the coast will be able to support two life again, because the stockpile would give the basic clean hex a plus one to make it a three, but the fact that it's dirty reduces it down to two. You can, if the stockpile is on a ice shelf, you will have four hexes in that, sorry, four units uh, in that hex, or you could have four units in that hex. As time goes by and you have more and more dead hexes, more and more dead hexes, these will show you which hexes are affected by the radiation. Looking something, it's looking something like that. The cards, and you draw one new card each round um, with one card visible to show you what is happening this turn plus a second card to show you what is coming up in the next turn and the black hexes are where the radiation will appear and the white hex is where more of the neutral civilians will appear. Let's have a quick look at the actions you can do during the game. And you can take four actions, uh, and you have a choice of six. You can repeat the same action as many times within those four actions as you choose, with one exception which we'll come on to, and that, will, but, but that exception will require you to use all four of your actions to do, to do. The first action is quite simple, it's march. You march one of your units, one hex. And that is one action. You can take just one or all of your units and move one, two, three. That is the march action. Civilians cannot go onto a dead hex. That is not allowed. Nor can they go onto a hex with an enemy soldier. However, they can move onto a hex with a civilian. Neutral civilian. The second action you could do is transport. And so long as you have both a unit in the starting hex and a unit in the finishing hex, you are allowed to transport the stockpile to that adjacent space. Next is threaten. I'll just add a couple of units threaten. You can, so long as you have either more civilian units or a soldier, force an enemy, enemy civilian out of a hex. 
you cannot do this if you have an equal number of civilians or if there is an enemy adjacent enemy an enemy soldier in the hex or indeed an enemy soldier so that action is not actually applicable here however if my unit if the blue units were here you could force an enemy unit out of the hex next action is press gang and this is where you can again with your soldiers or with a number of civilians greater than the the number of neutral units in the hex you're targeting you can change that neutral civilian into one of your own civilians that's press gang you can also uh, the fifth action is attack you do this with the soldiers uh, soldiers are not allowed to be positioned in a dead hex when this happens uh, soldiers are the only unit that can go into a dead hex um, and what will happen is you will remove both the soldier your soldier and the opposing soldier that you're targeting they will be removed back into the the stockpile of units and then the nearest dirty hex will become dead the final action is the militarize and that is to turn one or two of your soldiers your civilians into a soldier and that uses up all the all the action points for the turn okay let's get started with our playthrough of meltwater uh, there is one phase that i have not shown you during the the introductory uh, elements to the video um, and that's the starvation phase uh, it does not happen on the first turn uh, it happens on the second turn so you have one full player turn for each side and then you begin the starvation phase and it makes more sense if i do that during the game rather than at the beginning with that in mind let's take a look at what's on the board um this is just the the quick start setup there's a number of different setup options in the manual i have on the side here the card that is going to come into effect at the end of this turn plus what's coming up I keep I orientate them slightly differently so I can remember which is which. I also have just this little cube and um, some counters there just to remind myself of whose turn it is. Um, but the cube isn't part of the game and you, that's just a personal thing I have. Um, the US always starts first. And we start with the action phase, which is where we take our actions, perhaps unsurprisingly. And so remember we have four action points and we can spend them to do those six actions. The state of the board at the moment is that there are two stockpiles per side, one here for the US and here. The Russians have, or the USSR have one here and then one up in the, in the north. Lots of civilians uh, coming in. Uh, the US forces are more geographically spread out than um, the USSR. Uh, but the USA do have the benefit of stockpiles in relatively safe locations. And I'm just looking at the quick start guide and I think I've placed one in the wrong place. There we go, we need an extra one just there. I thought it looked wrong. Um, okay, I think we're good to go. Yeah. That looks more like it. Right, okay, let's start. Four actions then. First action I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make things difficult for my opponent and I'm going to start by moving my soldier one two three spaces that's three of my four actions fourth action will be to attack and I'll remove both my soldier and the USSR soldier and replace the nearest dirty hex to my soldier with a dead hex meaning that there is a minus one modifier on all those areas around it. Quite an aggressive start, but the aim of this game is to just eliminate the other side. Um, okay, moving on to the doomsday phase. So this turn we have to place a radiation marker in C6, which is here, in E2, which is at the top, 
and then a civilian or a neutral civilian in A3, which is up in the top corner here. Okay, that card is removed and we slide down and reveal a new card. So Russians, Russians turn. We have to bear in mind now that our stockpile is surrounded by dirty hexes and there are a few worrying looking radiation markers coming in the next turn. So let's have a look. So at the end of this turn, E6 will be irradiated as will B4. B4, B4 is over on this side where the USA, USA are just up here. So let's see. I think it would make sense to transport for one action that stockpile out of the way. It would also, I think, make sense to perhaps move some of our soldiers. So let's move you there. That's two. And three. And four. No, and let's let's redo that. Let's move that there for two, and then let's move here. Change of plan. Let's move here for four, and I'll explain why that's a change of plan as we move into the next phase. Um, so that is the end of the USSR's action. B four and E six are irradiated and the space B3 becomes a civilian refugee hex uh, let's put these markers down there we go board is already starting to shrink and then just the neutral civilians on B3 which is up in the corner with the USA okay now we are into the USA's USA's turn and it's the start of the second turn and this is where what's called the starvation phase begins now those life sustaining numbers that we mentioned at the overview you have to make sure that each hex has only got the required number of units in it. Um, so a hex that can support two cannot have three units in it, for example. Any hex that is overstacked, the active player will get to reconcile the stacking in any way that he or she chooses. So for example, if it's the USA's, USA's turn and there is a USSR unit in an overstacked hex, as we would have had here had I not changed my mind, um, the USA player would have been able to decide what happened to that USSR unit. It's a game that has a great deal of power in the hands of the person who, who is determining what happens to the units during the starvation phase and you really don't want to be leaving your units at the mercy of the opposing player. Okay. So with that in mind, I probably have just realized I've left a fair number of units in the hands of the wrong players um, already, but let's see how we go. Let's put in these markers on that I neglected to do. Okay, so moving from the top, these are both okay. They can both sustain two units currently. This hex here cannot. Now, it can only sustain one one unit, um, leaving me as the USA player, USA player with a choice. Do I do something with my unit or do I do something with the civilian unit? Now what will happen is the unit that I choose will either flee, and that means it will move to a hex that can support it. So at the moment, this hex can only support one. These hexes here can only support one meaning there is nowhere for the unit to flee to. The 
The next option is deflect. Again, there is no hex that can sustain enough life for the unit to deflect. What that means is one of these units will go to the opposing side and become the opposing side's unit or the Russian, Russian unit. The other thing that might happen in this instance is somebody will die. And because I have the choice as the USS, USA player, the civilians will die. Had I been the US, USSR player, I may well have wanted the USA units to die. As we move along the hexes, we have a similar situation here. No units can survive because this hex is full. These hexes are empty. Units can never flee to an empty hex. There is not enough. Uh, there's not enough support there from 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 any government or or what have you to sustain life. Basically, it's a frozen wasteland. Still, there's no infrastructure, or such as it exists here in either of these hexes. Therefore, it's my choice as to which one of these two units dies. And because I'm the USA, the USSR has died. Uh, this hex here is dead. Again, there's nowhere to flee to. Um, everything is at. Actually, that's not quite right. This hex here, although it has a minus one for being a dirty hex, it does have a plus one due to the stockpile here with a friendly unit in it. Therefore, this civilian will flee to F3 and it will become a blue USA civilian. Moving down, we are okay here, okay here. This can only support one, one unit. This here can support three, so he will flee and become a red civilian. All the other hexes are okay as far as I can see. So now to the USA's actions. Um, I will press gang this civilian into a USA civilian. I will then move, transport for three, and then move again into the stockpile. That's the end of the USA's actions. The radiation will appear in C5. In J4, with civilian refugees in I1. Refresh the decks for the cars for the next turn. And we move on to the Russian side. As I mentioned before, the fact that a dead hex has appeared will make unmodified hexes dirty. Hexes like this one and this one that are already dirty won't have any additional modifiers, although that is now also a dirty hex. Okay. Russian player. Starvation phase as before. This time the Russians get to decide which units are going to suffer during the starvation phase. Um, we have an overstocked, overstacked hex here, nowhere for it to flee. One of the civilians will die. Everything else looks okay currently. This civilian is in a dead hex, needs to run away somewhere. But this hex is both full and has a minus one modifier applied to it. So this civilian dies. One of these civilians needs to run away. And they can only move to this hex due to the benefit provided from a friendly unit in a stockpile and the plus one modifier to all adjacent hexes. That is the end of that turn. Sorry, that phase, that starvation phase, and it's now the USR, USSR turn, um, action phase, and 
Coming up, we have um, radiation appearing in A3 and J3, which is all the way off to one side and then worryingly close again over here. A turn after that, we have more appearing in A3 and then J7 again, depressingly close to the USSR's side. So four actions, I think it would be an interesting tactic to either move this soldier here and attack, making this hex a dead hex. That would be quite a nasty tactic. The other option might be to move a stockpile. Um, we could threaten to move a soldiers out of there, uh, or indeed even threaten here. Which should be interesting. Um, we could press gang some of these up here as well. So let's have a think about what might damage the USA player more. Um, I think threaten two, two threaten. So we'll threaten one and threaten two. Move in for three and then transport for four. That's the end of the USSR actions. Uh, we'll move into the radiation and that was A3. And J3. And then the J7 is the civilians, and J7 is down here. Okay, the USA now gets to decide who lives and who doesn't in the starvation phase of the next turn. Okay, so starting up in the corner here. These can support two because of their dirty hexes, even though they are coastline uh, ice shelf hexes. The fact that they're a coastline reduces them back to their basic of two. There are already two units here, therefore these two die. The um, hexes along here all appear okay. That's within limits, that's within limits, as is that. These two are okay. This hex here, one of them will die. And I think we're okay other than that. So USA's player, USA player's turn. Um, wow, we've got a few problems because the, the stockpiles have been moved. Um, let's have a look at what's coming up. Coming up next is, um, a3 again plus J7. So all my units over there are going to have to move over, over here. That is, are going to have to move, or they are going to be dead. Um, might be useful to do that. Might be useful to perhaps militarize. Maybe that could be useful. That would be all of our actions, though. But the the extra soldiers maybe here would and and maybe. Yeah, maybe around here would negate the ability of the Russians to do that press gang or th and threaten action. Um, let's do that. This is all four actions to militarize, and I'll militarize just here. And I will also militarize up the top, just here. Well, that does kind of leave those those guys out and, and sacrificing those, I suppose, for the sake of the the military. Okay. A3 for radiation. We can't place a, oops, a radiation counter on A3 because it already has one. So we move to the next nearest dirty hex. J7 down the bottom. And then H8 for the civilians down there. Refresh the cards and it becomes the USA's, sorry, the USSR's turn to control the starvation phase. Dead Hex, nowhere to run, both those units die. All okay up here. And there. Okay there. 
I think we're okay. I think there's nothing else apart from that one to do. Um, okay, USSR's turn. I'm not liking this. This is, um, from the USSR's perspective, the militarization is quite concerning. And they have... The stock, well, we've got three stockpiles, but they're kind of surrounding our our areas. I need to do something military, I think, but I'm not sure what at the moment, whether to attack or whether to just militarize myself. Um, let's cause them some problems. So one, two, attack for three. The nearest dirty uh, dirty hex to where I was is actually this one. So we now have a dead hex there. Um, and my fourth action, I can't press gang, I can't threaten because of the presence of this soldier. Unless I do it up here, I may press gang for an extra civilian just there. Hope to militarize next turn. Okay, coming up we have C6, which is, again, it's um, occupied already. So we move to the next nearest one. J4, J4 again, the nearest hex is going to be there. However, yeah, that's the nearest hex. Okay, the, the Controlling player gets to choose when there is a choice, um, but it still has to be the nearest one. And if you if you can choose an empty hex, that you have to choose an empty hex. And uh, so really, that's one of those two. Uh, at the moment, I'm not entirely sure whether it should be here or should be here. But in the spirit of the game and the radiation moving in from the coastline, we're going to place the. Dirty Hex there, even though I am the Russian player. Um, okay. Starvation phase for the USA to control. Um, everything seems okay down this side of the map. There's not a lot there now. Um, we have not a lot here to worry about some dead hexes here. This hex can control, can sustain three due to the stockpile, but minus one, it can only sustain two. So one civilian is saved. The other civilian, however, is on a dead hex. It cannot go there because that buff is removed due to the fact that it's a dirty hex, meaning that the only place the USA can move to is this hex, which still has the buff here. So that can still sustain two two civilian or two units so we have a population growth in the russian side even though i'm the usa at the moment um okay so i think that's okay for the starvation phase moving on then to the usa's actual actions we militarized last time um I think what I will do, I want to reposition that soldier, I don't want to lose that soldier. Um, soldiers can move across dead hexes, uh, they're the only units that can. So let's, um, let's do that, let's move one, two, three, to ensure that he's safe for the next starvation phase, but then let us force this guy using the threat and action out here end of the usa's actions moving into the radiation phase or the doomsday phase and one of the great things about meltwater is how quickly the game moves once you get into the flow there's plenty to think about but because each individual thing is such a simple action to do h1 for the civilians um you can flow through the game really quickly and much much of the complexity of it lies in how you outmaneuver your opponent 
Um, you can play it solo. It, it's a great game solo, but two player does have that extra edge to it. Um, Russians then the Russian starvation phase. Um, the first hex we have to resolve is up here. Nothing around it can sustain life uh, except for that hex. So that one simply moves back. Um, that right, that unit there is dead. Not sure if I should have moved that last time. Um, the other hexes are all okay. So we move on to the USSR's actions. Um, that was pretty mean and nasty, wasn't it? Not the USA. Ah, oh dear. Okay. Um, these two units can't th threaten, or well, these two hexes can't threaten due to the presence of that soldier. Um, I think it might be worth spending all our actions militarizing, so we're going to militarize here, and we're going to militarize there. That's all four actions. The deceased hexes now are C3 and G7. Um, one thing about the game is that it doesn't quite have enough modifying markers with it, so let's see if I can't find some that we don't really use and place them somewhere more more meaningful. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Um, USA. Oh, Red Fiji is in I7. Can't go to I7, so they're going to go to the next nearest space. Again, prioritizing an empty space where possible. Um, The USA then, right next turn, this turn, radiation will come in in D7, which is there, and J3, which is again over in this corner, uh, following turn, B3 and B5 and G7, so B5 is up the top, down the bottom, sorry, and G7 is also along here, so radiation is pressing in on the American side at the moment. Let us do something I think we're going to have to try and cause yet further military action, military problems for the Russians. So I'll move one, I will attack on here. Um, no, because if I was to do that and then I was to attack the nearest hex, dirty hex would have to be destroyed as to become a dead hex. But again, it's that issue of prioritizing an empty one so this one would become dead not this one so that's perhaps less of a important action to do at the moment unless I do it here to this unit and then the nearest dirty hexes are going to be either these two or these two uh, don't really want to kill my own guys but they will have the opportunity to move um, because I have the civilians here. Let's do that, let's attack. We'll attack there. Let's move to here and then attack. No, no, so, ah, oh, see, the, 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 the kind of thinking you have to do for the game is incredible from such simple actions. Um, I do still want to cause problems for them though. Let's try and do uh, an aggressive action in a slightly different way. So move here. I will threaten to move out. Thre that's one, two, three, and four. That's a suitably aggressive action without necessarily making my own life more difficult than it needs to be. Okay. Um, time for the radiation. And that was D7 goes to the nearest empty hex, J3, again goes to the nearest hex this time, 
it's going to have to be the civilians and then more civilians come in on i1 wow that hex is massively overstacked now um move the cards and we can move to the starvation phase with the ussr player controlling um there's a few overstacked hexes to resolve now so first one that is unresolved is here only place this can go now because I have taken control of the hex is into this space here and gosh it's six or one half there's any other isn't it let's move the US the neutral civilian into the USA space turning him into a USA civilian and the same thing here which means that that hex is now full one of these has to die and so the civilians will the neutral civilians will suffer um here we're overstacked we cannot move there now cannot move to any other spaces one of the russian civilians will die um any overstacking anywhere else here again civilians suffer sadly this um this game is quite bleak as clever as it is it is quite a bleak game um uh, everything else is okay looking at it i think so ussr actions the the usa have been very aggressive here um and there is a risk that the game will become unrecoverable from the ussr point of view um and that is actually something that's mentioned in the rule book if it gets to the point in the game where it's clear one side is going to win you can voluntarily concede um should you choose to um okay let's simply move some of our people uh one two transport for three and then four let's move them away from the coastline um yep that sounds good let's then do the radiation so b5 which is here moves to the next nearest just there g7 becomes that one b3 for the civilians oh gosh the nearest civilian three hex for civilians there okay coming up we have e2 which is more radiation up in this kind of northern space here j7 down in this corner okay and then next turn f1 and j6 okay with civilians coming on obviously as well um usa's starvation phase i think everyone's okay this time there's no real change from last turn um i don't want to do too much damage to my own units these guys can't currently threaten or anything like that because of the presence of the soldier um let's attack let's attack using mm, yeah let's attack no i'm indecisive let's build up our forces for a massive attack next turn Militarize all four actions. I'm going to turn him and him into soldiers. Okay. That's the end of the USSR's turn. E2 is just there. The nearest space is there. Um, nearest empty space that is here we have j7 just here there's no 
nearby empty space so the next nearest is that hex there meaning that that will be a dead hex and that will be a dirty hex the civilians come on in b4 which is surrounded by radiation but they still somehow manage to make it to there moving the cards along And we have, again at the end of this turn, remember we have F1 and J6, which is sort of in this area, and F1 is, is here. And then following on from that, we have H8 down the bottom here, um, and then K4, which is there. So pressing in from the Russian side this turn is the Russians, sorry, this USA's starvation phase um, this civilian is deceased and I think everything else is currently okay um, right then USA's actions um, the concern is going to be that the USA is going to be attacked, clearly. Um, we have two soldiers here, two soldiers here. Um, we want to try to avoid too much in the way of problems we could preemptively attack. That would be an interesting option. Um, or we could somehow get the soldiers off their stockpiles uh, or the USA, sorry, the USSR civilians off the stockpiles and the weakest one looks like this one. So let's move just one space so that we're not under the influence of these soldiers and we can then threaten two, move in the three, and um, move here for four. Doomsday phase. We have F number one, which is there. J6, next nearest J6 is that one. I just realized that's overstacked, so that needs to come away. Um, the marker was hidden. Okay. Um, And civilians in H8. And then we change the cards, revealing more radiation towards the southern western side and the north in a couple of turns' time. So, starvation for the Soviets to resolve. Um, so unit at the bottom can only sustain one, hex at the bottom can sustain one, these are all okay. I think the only spot that is unresolved is there, they are deceased. And then we are okay to go. Um, Okay, the USSR's actions. Um, let's just do that military turn, shall we? We'll attack. Nearest empty hex. 
would be this one. We will move. We'll attack. And for the fourth action, fourth action will be to threaten to there. Quite a nasty thing there, but let's see how we get on, what the USA can do. First though, H8 becomes irradiated, K4, the nearest one is irradiated, and then civilians come in at I1 at the top again. Okay. USA to resolve the starvation phase, and we have more civilian casualties. Um, we have risky, risky situation here. However, they can flee into this hex because that can still sustain two because of the increased baseline um, that ice shelf hexes have. Um, everywhere else is currently okay, which is good is good okay um move some of the modifiers around a little bit just to make sure we have them all in the right spot usa actions I feel like i need to militarize to sort of to strike back somewhat at the at the Russians, but the risk of doing that, of course, is that you simply end up making yourself vulnerable to to whatever the Russians have planned next turn. Uh, let's have a look. Um, let's have a think, shall we? Um, Let's try and keep a tighter hold on that stockpile. So one, two, transport the stockpile. Three, and then four. Hopefully that's keeping, keeping moved our stockpile away from too much danger uh, and kept it out of the hands of the Russians. Okay, speaking of the Russians, we have to put a radiation counter in G1, which is a Russian held hex currently, and D7, nearest one to it is there. Um, refugees come on in B4. And again, the nearest hex is going to be there. Um, USSR to resolve the starvation phase. I'm just going to move one of these modifiers so we have a better idea of what's modified where just for now, uh, just so we can see that here we have a minus modifier as well, um, which is a problem for our Russian soldier up there because he cannot flee to anywhere of his own. He could defect because this gets a plus one buff from the stockpile. So our soldier is defecting. And what happens is rather than becoming a US soldier, he becomes a US civilian. That's unfortunate from a Russian point of view or um, 
The other hexes are all okay at the moment. Um, but it is the Russians' turn, and we've suddenly got quite a difference, quite a swing there in what's happened. Um, I think it's time to militarize as the USA. Make sure we remove any threat, threat that the Russians may be presenting to us. Um, I'm going to militarize this one. And I'm going to additionally militarize this one. Keep our stockpiles safe. The radiation is C5E1. Refugees in A3, C5 moves to D5, E1 at the top there moves to that hex. Uh, okay, the civilians came on in A3, uh, which would have moved to here. I realise that that is actually already overstacked, so I took one away and placed it in ready to show the new arrivals. Um, we'll change the cards over and here we're moving into C3 and K5 next turn which is again off to the coast and on the eastern side as well. The turn after that we have I1 at the top right in the uh, on the coast again and K4 moving the radiation this way. Things are looking Bleak for our <coughs> me, for our Russian side. Um, okay, it is the Russians' turn to resolve the starvation phase. And the Russians are going to firstly. This one is dead. No, it's not. That's okay because of the... So that was actually incorrect before. The previous one was okay, so it should look like that, but one will now die. So that's actually okay, that hex. Um, the Russians here are dead. They cannot flee anywhere, so they are dead. The... USA are okay, um, and again, okay here, here though, we are also okay. These ones, however, have deceased. Right, USA, USSR's turn to take actions. Um, Things do not look particularly good, as was mentioned a moment ago. Um, okay, one attack for two. Nearest empty hex, move a couple, that's my choice. So the stockpile is now in a dead hex. If anyone wants to get that stockpile, they have to send a soldier in and transfer it out. Um, does, however, mean that my own civilians are going to now be in, an, in a dirty hex. However, that's a small price to pay, I think, for causing problems for the USA's side. Um, so that was two actions. Third action. Can't really do anything else at the moment. That's that. Things are, yeah, it's starting to struggle. We may be nearing the point where we concede. I have taken this game right down to the very last move with only a couple of soldiers left though. So I don't necessarily want to give up just yet in case I can think of something, but let's see what happens with the USA. Um, C3 and K5 are irradiated. C3 moves to here because it's empty. K5 is here on the coast but moves to the next nearest one which is oh right in the stockpile 
of the Russians. Oh, the Russians should have paid a bit more attention. Oh dear, okay. I7 is a dead hex, moves into the nearest free hex or non dead hex. Um, change the cards over. We now have I1 and K4 and J7 coming up in this turn with D1, D7, sorry, F1, D7, and A3 in the following turn. Um, don't think we're going to go that way because it is now the Russians' turn to. So the USA's turn to resolve the starvation. Um, Unit's dead. Cannot cannot flee. Not enough anywhere else. So dead. This one can flee. I think we're good everywhere else apart from here. Um, this one will die. Um, USA again. Um, right, let's just move that marker so it's a bit more clear. Um, I think we want to kind of end this now, don't we, really? Uh, so, okay, move to here. It's one. Two. Three. Sorry, let me change that. Two. Three. Threaten into that sex. And then four. Do the doomsday in I1. And in K4, which moves across to here. Um, refugees in J7, which moves to there. Um, it's the Russians' turn to resolve the starvation. However, can't really do much. This one's deceased. This um hex here can only survive hold old two There's nowhere else it can flee to my mistake can actually still go there because ah no 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 it can't because we don't have the soldier this is no longer providing a friendly benefit so it can only hold a my minus one so it's actually a one oh that was a mistake from the usa um one has cannot move so that one is deceased um, those two are still okay though, at the moment at least. Nothing else is going on really for the, um, the Russians, but honestly we can't really do anything now. Um, best we can do is militarise, which I think we will. We'll militarise. Go down fighting. And then we do the doomsday, which is D7 and F1, D7, F1, that's the closest. Uh, the USA's turn to resolve any starvation. Um, this one's deceased. Everything else is okay, I think. How can the Russians pull this one out? That is a good question. Maybe they can. 
Maybe they can. Um, one, two. And then attack. The Russians now have the only non irradiated stockpile. Hexes that now become irradiated to C5. This one, because it's the only empty one. J2 up the top here moves along to be this one. Um, take some of those markers back now that we, can, we have them. In fact, the only non irradiated hex in the entire game currently is this one here. Um, but it is the USA's turn to resolve any starvation. No starvation needs to be resolved. So it's actions. We can't threaten. So we will militarize this one. And this one. End of the, end of the turn. E6 and I7 now for the radiation. E6 is here, moves to there. Um, I7's here, moves to there. Refugees come on in H8, which now becomes that. Um, well, that one. And then it's the Soviets' turn to Okay, starvation. That one cannot go anywhere. It's deceased. This one is deceased. This one can go here, actually. That's not bad. Um... Okay. Right, okay, that's my thinking time. Uh, it's the Russians' turn. I'm stumped as to what to possibly do. Um, All the Russians can really do at this point is move out of the space. Um, and can't really do much. Uh, if we attack, we're going to give up our stockpile at the end of the game. Could potentially move. I suppose all we can really do is militarise that. And... The radiation keeps coming in, B4 this time. Oh wow, that's going to go all the way over here, so B4 probably there. It's, I'm the Russian side so to decide. Ah, no, B4, that'll be the best place. And then J7, there. Um... USA's turn to resolve any starvation. Um, that's deceased. That's okay. Nothing else is deceased. And we will attack. And attack. And that. It's game over. So, even though the 
US population is surrounded by radiation miles away from any stockpile it counts as a win thanks very much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed that giving you an idea of how meltwater works and and how you can solo it even though it's more of a two-player game really um if you like the like the video please like subscribe etc and i'll see you next time thank you